Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining me on this wild ride. In today's build, we're going to be making some parts for an alley or a sidewalk, just some scatter props for your action figures or your dioramas. Now, some of the things that I am going to be using today, I did buy from a store, but I do plan on building some stuff as well. So hang in there. Everyone's favorite part. This channel is about three things. It's about learning, it's about teaching, and it's about building. And we, if we have some fun along the way, that'll be all right too. But now that we got all this out of the way, <laughs> thanks Sam, I'm gonna go make something. Here are the materials and items I used in this build. Don't worry about getting a list. I'll put that down in the description below. First, we need to start by disassembling these cute little treasure boxes I got from the dollar store. I knew the size of hinge I wanted, and these boxes were perfect for when they needed. We're also going to cut out lids for the pre-made box I made for the dumpster. I'm using corrugated paper that I used on the shipping container, which is my first video, chapter one. What we're doing here is sandwiching the hinges between the cardboard and the corrugated paper. What this did was offered me more structural stability with the extra weight from the cardboard and the corrugated paper stock. You'll see later that they're a little heavy. These pallets from the dollar store were fantastic. They needed a little bit of gussing up, so I put some little pinholes to make it look like nails, snapped one in half to give it kind of a distressed look, and some black wash to give a little bit more grunge to it. After letting the glue dry, I added the nails in through both sides of the stock. Now the nails did extend out a little bit too long, so I covered that up on the back side with a little bit of hot glue so the sharp end would be covered. I take some more cardstock and add this banding to give it a little bit of accent and when we do the dry brush it's really going to pop. I was really concerned about how the construction of the side slots where the arms go in to pick up the dumpster looked but I really think they turned out great. I also used hot glue and teased it around so it looked like some really bad welding spots. Lots more banding. I really enjoyed the freedom of just letting my creativity flow. Now this was a trickier part of the build. Um, this was a slime container from the dollar store and I wanted to add little handles on the side to make it look like a, a used dirty trash can. And since it was curved I had to create these pieces on a curve. Um, this is one of those parts I was talking about with having a 3D printer would have helped out so much more. These containers are really nice, but they are from the dollar store, so they just need a little bit of cleaning up from the flashing from the mold. These little pink clamps I got from the dollar store as well, and they really helped keep the handles in place but unfortunately while pulling one off there's a little bit of glue so I had to re-glue it reclamp it and wait for it to dry this plastic absolutely needed some primer so they just get a quick couple coats and we're still putting banding on I actually did end up creating two of these one I did on a live feed on my Instagram, so if you want to check that out, I'll have a link in the description. I wanted to create another style of lid, so I only used foam. This I accented with pressing in the palette on the end to give a cool effect. Now it's time to add the lids. Attaching these with the other screws was really easy and I only had to use a little bit of extra hot glue.
Now it's time for the other dumpster. This one I used by poking holes through the styrofoam with the hot end of the hot glue gun to create little holes. And then I filled it all in. I repeat the same technique to put them on the back. I will say, I do enjoy how the other lids look, but these were much lighter and allowed the hinges to work a lot better. Speaking of working better, here's another issue that I came across. Because the lids were so heavy and the rest of the dumpster wasn't, I had a problem with it tipping over. This was an easy fix with a couple of pennies. I wrapped them up with some medical tape and then glued them on the inside of the front of the dumpster. And just like that, I have the weight I needed. Now it's on to our base coat. This is Mod Podge and black paint, super easy. And when the white of the Mod Podge dries, you get a nice black base coat. We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna go over to our trash cans and our barrels. Since they got a coat of gray primer, they're ready to paint right away. I use a silver base coat on the trash can and gives it just a little bit of a brand new look. And for the two drums, I went with a little bit of a Christmas feel. I'm gonna do red and green for base coats. Next for the red barrel, we're gonna give a, an orange dry brush to give it a little bit of a rusty effect. And for the green barrel, we're gonna give it a nice lime green dry brushing. I really like how this gives it the really sun bleached faded effect. I had the idea for this dumpster for a while. The dumpster at my work had, was brown and beat up and I really liked how it looked and I wanted to make one of my own. Let's get a, another coat of black paint on top of the Mod Podge and paint that I used. It didn't seem to be thick enough and I really wanted it to have a nice dark, rich color. Now we're gonna move on to the dry brushing. This is just a peach tone. I feel like it is a really nice way to showcase wear and tear on certain colors. And then we're going to move to a light gray for the black. Uh, I really liked how this gives, like I said earlier, that sun bleached look on the quote unquote plastic. Now, welcome to Jared's cooking channel. On today's episode, we are going to be making a lovely dish of black wash. Black wash or any color wash is going to be a really helpful tool to age your pieces and make them feel a little more lived in, grimy, uh, dirty, more believable. A lot of people utilize just water and paint and they'll use like dish detergent to help it make it a little more runny. I utilize just the paint and the water and I think it gives a great effect. Everything about this is all about layering. So make sure that when you put down one layer, don't worry about how it looks because we're going to give it a couple more coats and the layering is going to help sell the effect. If you feel like you added a little too much wash, you can take some paper towel, wipe it off, and then just add it back.
It's going to take some trial and error before you find the wash that works for you. I'm using a little bit of water and some paint and it gives this like muddy effect on the bottom. And I really like how it came out. This is another way of adding multiple layers to give you the effects you want. Now we're going to add some science to the dumpsters. This is really easy. All you'll need is some pictures printed out and some Mod Podge. Apply some Mod Podge to the back of your pictures and then place them where you want. This could also be used to seal in your pictures before you do the black wash. Just add a coat over the top and allow to dry before you do your black wash. Now I'm going in and adding the black wash effect to these now because I really wasn't sure what I wanted when I did the black wash the first time. And finally, we're gonna add one last dry brush. This is after we've done all of our black washes and this is just to help bring back those highlights. So you're not gonna wanna hit it so hard that you, it looks like you're adding a whole new layer. Just really just hit some of the high points and you're gonna see the piece come back to life. Now with everything built, glued, painted, and finished, it's ready for some glamour shots. And there we go, guys. I absolutely loved this video. I love making these props uh, and utilizing pieces that were already pre-built. Uh, I feel like it allowed me to bring a higher level uh, of product to you guys. Uh, that being said, I actually do have plans to be uh, bring in a 3D resin printer into my builds. Uh, I think that it's gonna allow me, um, again, like I said, higher quality to the product I have at the end of the videos. Now, would that be something you guys would wanna see? Um, do you wanna see me continue going with me building everything in the video, or do you want me to utilize more things like this to bring more realism into each of my pieces? Um, let me know down below. But then moving on to the next, we gotta do it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff down below. Honestly, all the likes, the comments, everything gets added up. YouTube will eventually start paying me money by putting ads on. I would absolutely love that. I would love to be getting money for doing the thing that I love doing. It's a fantastic way. And your help is how I get there. Now, everyone who's already done everything, I am so appreciative of everything. All of your love that you've given me has filled up my heart and just wants me to continue making more to make you guys happy. This is back and forth kind of thing. You make me happy, I make you happy. That's a wonderful thing. Now, it is time to go. And I'll see you guys next time in Chapter 5. Later.